Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Savior's is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ, whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our contemporary worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Thank you. It is a wonderful day here at Our Saviors, this third Sunday in the season of Advent. As you can tell, there are many exciting things happening this morning. We're pleased to have Angelic with us, and children are going to be putting on a program in just a minute or two here. So we are ready to begin this wonderful time together. Again, welcome to all of you. Welcome to our guests who are with us today. I know there's some that are visiting for the program especially. And for those of you who join us via television and Facebook Live, it's great to have you as part of our worship service today. Now, as we do begin our time in worship, I'm going to call upon Gene to lead us in our song for Advent. And he's wearing my most favorite sport coat in the world. <laughs> Please join me in singing this. Here we go. Today we light candle three with our candle lighters here. Oh, there's Monica. Hi. Come on up. And we are ready to go. There you go. I'm not sure who's doing the reading and who's doing the lighting, but. At every beginning, there's an impatient hope 
for the promise of what is to come while we wait, O oh God. We gather together to allow our deeply held hopes to be reshaped by God's promise while we wait, O oh God. We wait for the day when God will make us a future that is no longer predicted in our fear or limited by our doubt. While we wait, O oh God. We look towards the future and we dare to let excitement and hope into our hearts. We look forward to the day when we justice and mercy will reign. While we wait, O oh God. Jesus, we welcome your presence now with the lighting of these candles whose flame bring warmth to winter and fill this place with the glow of hope. Amen. Your, uh, your sweaters are just ugly today. <laughs> My goodness. Well, today you won't hear a typical sermon from the pulpit. First of all, our pulpit's over there, so I can't even get behind it. But Instead, you will hear good news proclaimed by our pre-K through fifth graders and some wonderful youth leaders as well. Their story will be told from the perspective of angels and the night Jesus was born. And I hope you will watch and listen for the way that each individual plays their part in making sure that this smile, that this small, quiet, but heaven and earth shaking moment of Jesus' birth does not pass without notice. But at the same time, or maybe even more, I, will hope, I hope that you will see how each of these young people is playing their part in sharing this good news. Watching them rehearse in yesterday's tech rehearsal, I kept finding myself wanting to slow down, watching each individual child tell a story in their own way. It has shed new, it, it, this experience has shed new light for me on why God chose to come to us as a child. Can you picture it? Little preschool Jesus, God incarnate, learning to tell God's story in the synagogue's Hanukkah program? Learning his lines, practicing his words and actions, sharing the story of God's provision with all who gathered, sharing the story to be heard fresh by all who gathered, and also taking in the story himself and letting it shape him and the way he sees the world. How his parents watched with nervous anticipation to see if he would remember his lines or if he would get nervous and want to leave the stage. And then the feeling of pride and relief to see him using his gifts and doing what God made him to do. Of course, I don't know if Jesus was ever in the synagogue's Hanukkah program. I don't know if he ever played Fifth Candle or Second Mac Maccabee. But I know that God did choose to come to us as a child. And we don't get too many chances to really appreciate what that means. And I think today is as good a day as any. Just last week, we heard a reading from Isaiah 11. You might remember it, about the lion and the lamb lying together. It's a beautiful scene about how God's reign on earth will look. This is what we heard. Jesse's family is like a tree that has been cut down. A new little tree will grow from its stump. From its roots, a branch will grow and produce fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on that branch. The spirit will help him to be wise and understanding. The spirit will help him to make wise plans and carry them out. The Spirit will help him know the Lord and have respect for him. The branch will take delight in respecting the Lord. He will not judge things only by the way they look. He won't make decisions based simply on what people say. He will always do what is right. And when he judges those who are in need, 
he'll be completely fair. And when he makes decisions about poor people, when he commands that people be punished, it will happen. When he orders that evil people be put to death, it will, be, it will take place. He will put on godliness as if it were his belt. He'll wear faithfulness around his waist. And then the next part, do you remember that? The prophet Isaiah imagined that in God's vision of peace on earth, it would be a child who would lead them. Not a powerful king or a decorated veteran of war, not a savvy politician or a scholar at the height of her career, not a celebrity, but a child will lead them. Today we get a glimpse of what it means to have a child lead us like God intended. I hope this telling of the story draws you in and renews your sense of wonder about this amazing story of how God decided to enter the world to save us. I hope this telling of the story encourages you to let God work powerfully through you and share the good news in your own way. And I hope the tellers of the story draw you in and renew your hope for what God is up to in our world, even now.
Angels say what? Angels say what? Angels say what? Angels say what? Glory in the highest to the newborn king. Telling everybody about the love he brings. Shout hallelujah every single day. Whoa. That's what angels say. Glory to God in the spreading joy to the world. How? Yeet. Blue? Yeah. Oh my goodness, I didn't see you there. It's like you peered out of thin air. Yeah! Just talk to those shepherds and please make sure little star's in place. <sighs> Ophelia, I'm so nervous light the way in that big sky. Nobody could ever expect that from such a tiny thing like me. Oh, little star, don't worry. God will give you the courage when the time is right. So Gabriel, I see you're back. How did Mary take the news about God's plan? Was she blown away? I'm glad you asked, Joy. She was like, whoa, me? She was excited, but nervous. <laughs> Boom! Man, those shepherds were so excited. They were like, what? And that guy even fainted. <laughs> How? Ye? Lou? What are you two so excited about? It's like you're walking on sunshine. Walking on sunshine! Whoa! And we've been waiting for months and months, and tonight we finally got the chance to tell the shepherds that our Messiah is here. You should have seen their faces. They were like, what? <laughs> Joy, did you not hear that multitude of heavenly hosts singing? So that's what it was? Gabriel, we've never heard something so beautiful. It probably caught Joy off guard to hear all of those angels singing it. It was like they were knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Yeah, anyway, the important thing is why the angels were singing. Here comes the sun. Here, Here comes, comes the sun. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It was so amazing. I think we ought to sing it again.
time to shine and light the people to come see what God has done. Angels say what? <laughs> what? Don't worry, little star, you were made for this moment. Remember, little star, God chose you to shine his holy shine his holy light on the ground on the holy ground. You're right. It's not about me and how nervous I am. It's about doing my part to glorify God. I'm ready. Remember, the birth of God's son is bigger than all of us. It's the greatest story ever told. <clears throat> when they saw the star, they were just exceedingly with great joy. And coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him.
adult, it's a whole story. And to think, the Christmas story is unfolded in such unexpected ways. Little star, you were so beautiful, I can't believe how bright you were. Or I was about to take out my sunglasses. Yeah, we did. Hey, there, little star. Angel said, oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> how? Ye? Lou? Yeah? Why didn't you two use all that energy and sing with the rest of us in joyful worship to our new king?
I think that we should thank the kids and the leaders for a wonderful program one more time. Yeah. And while I'm at it, thanks parents for all your help getting them here for practices and all those wonderful things that you did to help uh, your kids tell the story to us today. Thanks to the ushers and the deacons too for getting things back together again as we continue now with worship. And I invite you to join me with that, turning to the words on the screen, and we confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time we'll receive our offering, and we hear again from Angelic. What shall I offer? What shall I give? What 
Again, thank you to Angelic for that wonderful music. I invite you now to stand as you're able and let us turn to our confession and forgiveness. As we gather, we remember the great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And at the same time, if we are honest, many of us believe this and doubt that it is true. We wonder how long we have to wait for Christ to return, or maybe even if he ever will. So let us confess our unbelief and our sins to God. Emmanuel, God with us, 
We need your forgiveness for what we've done with the time you've given us. We fill our minutes and days to make ourselves feel useful and important. We distract ourselves in free moments so we don't have to wait, so we don't get bored. You might have filled these seemingly empty moments with glimpses of your kingdom and whispers of your grace, but we have closed ourselves off from receiving them. We've worked to fill every minute to protect ourselves from one of the most egregious sins of our time, wasted time. Our choices prove we've doubted that your way is the best way. You choose essence, we choose productivity. You choose relationships, we choose returns. You choose selfless love, we choose selfish gains. You offer hope in a new creation full of peace, hope, joy, and love, but we have settled for the world's empty promises instead. Redeem us, Lord. We need your help while we wait. The God of Sarah, Hannah, and Elizabeth promises to come by our side even when we wait for the fulfillment of what has been promised. The God of Elijah promises to meet us in the silence. The God of Jonah, Zechariah, and Thomas promises to meet us when we doubt. God is with you in all of it. When unanswered prayer would threaten to drive a wedge between you and God, God holds you ever nearer still. While God calls us into a season of waiting, God will never leave you waiting for the forgiveness of your sins. The moment we confess our sins, God forgives us. So hear the good news. You are forgiven. Amen. And as we remember the night in which he was betrayed, that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Kindly come forward up through the center aisles as the ushers direct. All are welcome to God's table. On a dark December night, long ago in Bethlehem, a gift would be given to the world that would bring peace to all men. child would share God's holy word and make disciples out of men who would then tell what they'd heard. And who could have predicted this, that he'd be betrayed by just one kiss as they followed the nerves up the rise. He'd hear the Christian's morning cries as Mary sighs and wipes the sweat from Jesus' eyes. Her sweet face
Expecting child, they search the inn to find a place for you were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah. Shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just a Oh. 
This baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew was hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, be with us this day. And be with all who are in need. Be with those who need a sign of your joyful presence in their lives. Be with those whom we remember in our congregation who are in need of healing. Sarah Curtis Stevenson. Bob Matson, Margo Nelson, Jeff McKinney, and David Twiddle. Embrace the family in Elborg, Eleanor Givick, and all who mourn the loss of loved ones. And bless David and Sarah Missile, new parents of Bodie. Gracious God, we give you thanks in all things for the many gifts which you give to us. Through your Son, Jesus. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about our saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.